during this Cooties 19 outbreak. Um, because I did just see it as a, a tyrannical takeover. I didn't see it as this big scary virus. And um, I lost pretty much all of my friends, but I just knew what was right. And uh, a lot of people out here, it, I know of lost friends, lost family members, you've been ostracized. But uh, I remember when I walked through that door of the Harvest Church, I, it's, it's kind of the first time I ever felt like I belonged. Um, and it's not because, yeah. It's not because I was the same as all those people. It's just because I was accepted. And Art knew that uh, it was come as you are. And God, Jesus wants, Jesus is calling your name. It doesn't matter what stage you're at. We're all at a different place. And some of us have been to some very dark places. And um, he's got room for each and every one of us. You know what I mean? And he'll change you. It's like Art said the other day, I think he was talking about weed. I think he was talking about marijuana. And he said... Uh, you don't have to quit. When you come in here, you get to. Yeah. And um, I've, I've seen in myself and a lot of other people, that ju it's just some of these things, you just, just like you're, you're just shedding things. As you, as you get closer to Jesus, things just start to shed away. Great. And it's not, uh, it's, you just want to after a while. It's incredible. It's incredible. You don't need it. I'm not going to quit smoking though, okay, you guys? Don't make me quit smoking. I'll <laughs> make me quit nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how about we all throw our hands in the air and worship, hey? Woo! <laughs> okay, you guys good to go? Yeah. All right, you Amen. guys. Let's do it. Woo! Wow. Well, you know, there's something that actually does dispel darkness, and that is the presence of God. That comes through the praises of his people. This is a protest of the government locking down the church for, in our sixth month now, treating us as unessential. And we take exception to that. We're treated like kids, manage nothing. So we are protesting today with our worship. Would you join? Yeah. Use. Now, God's going to come down and do some stuff, dispel some darkness and some viruses and whatever else is holding you back. Because God is good and he's faithful to come when he is worshipped and praised. By the way, I think we have, uh, do we have the words available somewhere? Uh, so one sec, you know what, uh, Mitch, give the mic to our tech guy there. We got a little treat for the crowd here, I think. You know, Jonathan. Um, Jonathan. Check. Hello. Come right in the middle, Jonathan, so they can see you. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. We have the lyrics for like 10 songs here, so we made QR codes. We're going to post them at various points. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Or you can go to theharvest.ca slash lyrics. These will be up in the next five minutes. Uh, you know, eventually we'll get this all figured out, but I'm thankful for young people that know how to do stuff. All right, let's thank the Lord for his faithfulness right here.
know, it's just so weird. A year ago when we saw people in the streets of Wuhan falling down, dying, like falling down dead, like on the videos. And I was like, holy crap, look at this thing that's like coming for us. And you know, so our church actually shut down for two weeks. And then we're like, what the heck are we doing? The, the people need the church more than ever, actually. We've got God. What the heck? It's like, what are we doing? And so, you know, we packed out our little building twice a week for a year thinking, well, somebody's going to get sick at some point. Uh, no. I mean, I do give glory to God, but yeah, I, 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 I don't see anyone falling down dead. I, I think we've been duped, y'all. Having said that, it's nice to have God on your side, isn't it? It's like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. There was a prayer from a prophet years ago, Isaiah 64, 1, that says, Oh God, would you rend the heavens and come down? Kelowna needs God. Canada needs God. Let's sing the song together. Rend the heavens. Come down, oh God. Yeah. Heavens and come down in the heavens and come down. 
Yeah. You know, there's a lot of high places in this nation that are dictating what even God is allowed to do in the nation. Well, we call those high places down. <laughs> we call them down. This nation belongs to God. You know, I've said this before on the stage of Battle for Canada. I'll say this. Justin Trudeau thinks we have no identity, but I'm going to tell you something. We do. It's the dominion of Canada, and we belong to God. Yeah. A reason, hallelujah. Presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. Raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody.
the middle of this storm. Sing louder. So as Mitch said, um, I'm that really bad pastor, Art Lucier, who uh, kept our church open for the Harvest Church, and I'm surrounded by a bunch of inconsiderate great people, the Harvest Church. But uh, let a shout go if you're from the Harvest. Yeah. Bunch of criminals. Mind you, I was at a rally yesterday, and they all liked me. What the? <laughs> like what gives? I, like what? I, I, sent, I have friends. I sent them money. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife of 30 years, Heather. Yeah, just. And our little boy, Gimli. Uh... <laughs> That's our son, Jesse, on the drums. He's with us for one more week, and then he's doing a big move to Belize with his wife to start a new life. And bass player, Wayne. He knows all the songs for the last thousand years. It's amazing. Just, uh, he knows everything. And Bill Olson, crazy man Bill Olson, who was there when I gave my life to God 32 years ago, and he's been keeping an eye on me ever since. Pastor Bill Olson. Yeah. He likes his guitar. He, hey, Bill, when did you buy that Marshall stack? How old were you? I bought it brand new in 1975, and I was 15. <laughs> 75 years old. He bought that at 15 years old. 75 years old. <laughs> In 1975. It actually cost more than a new car. In 1975. That Marshall stack. Yeah. <laughs> My well, dad. Hey, man, why, why don't you do a song and let us hear it? You know, like... Woo! Oh. No, not that one. We don't want no smoke in the Okanagan. No, no, not that. No. That was last year. Smoke last. That was two years ago. The smoke and No.
seen the more you still call me friend God of the mountain come on it's the God of the valley no there's not a place no mercy and grace won't find me again last year I want you to let a shout out in three like if God's been talking to you and if you were dry or dead or you were away from God you were a prodigal you weren't even saved but you have been touched and led by God in the last year I want you to shout in th on three one two three really really wow God's doing something there's a move of God happening but who knows there needs to be a lot more. I love this song. This is a move, but we need a move. God, we need you. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe in. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do And bodies are still being raised Giants are still being slain God, we believe Yes, we can see that Wonders are still what you do We are here again. We need a move. Yes, we need a move. And bodies. Bodies are still being raised. Our giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what to do.
miracles happen when you move healing is coming here in this place miracles happen when you move heaven is coming miracles miracles happen when you move healing is coming in this room miracles happen when you move heaven is coming sing one more time miracles nation again. Bring the young people back to you, God. For the world is empty. Yes, we need a move. for what's right but we are actually asking for God to come upon this nation again yeah. would you restore us yeah. would we, you restore an honor for your name and an honor for this nation and what this nation was built on we need a move oh God Of 
the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have seen in the goodness of God. Cause all my life now, and all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Almighty. Let's give a shout out for God, the Supreme One, our Deliverer, our Healer, our best friend, the one who sticks closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. Thank you, Lord, the goodness of God. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe just, we're just going to do one more, uh, and then we're going to switch gears. Uh, our apologies to you if this, some of these songs are new, but we do have, I think they're online. Um, they're online, and uh, so you can just, I see some people actually looking at their phones. I, yeah, you're watching the lyrics? Oh, that's awesome. It's working. Okay, that's great. 
Yeah, it's, it's great. It's such a weird day and age we live in. I remember growing up at church. You remember those overhead projectors? And you had write it out and stick it on and then flip to the next one. You know, like we've come from, <laughs> from that to people reading and worshiping with their phones. Like it's just so crazy. I, I remember <laughs> the stone tablets. The st- <laughs> well, you are much older than I am. <laughs> You know what, this song is just called Everything and Nothing Less. Just like, Lord, you know, in a day and age like this, really what do we have except here I am. Use us where you can. We worship you. We stand for you. At, at some point, you just got to make a stand. Yeah, so blessings on all of you today for just making a stand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
hear you just one more time. Just one. Dear God, we pray that you would rip the fear from the hearts of the men and women of this city. We pray for a mass awakening for the people of this city and of this nation. That you would, that you would turn us into lions, God. Lions for your word yeah. and for your spirit. Yeah. That we would be brave, God. That we would be brave and that the enemy would cower pray that you take away the hate, yeah. the resentment, the division, that you help us identify the enemy when he reveals himself to us. Praise God. Praise God. That you would free us, Lord, break our chains from addiction. That you would solidify the family units that we're watching dissolve around us, God, that you would bring us all together unified in your spirit and that for those walking by on the street and those in the crowd that are ready to leave the vapid instant gratification of this world behind God that they would hear your name they would hear your call Lord hallelujah praise God May your spirit waft throughout this city, Lord. Let it waft. 
<laughs> it blows through the flags. It even blows through my cape. Like, can you guys see it? <laughs> I can't believe you guys aren't wearing capes. Are you anti-cape? What's going on here? <laughs> That's right. You don't need it to be a hero. It does make you feel like one, though. I stand a little taller. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, man. I love seeing worship out in the park. I just watch everybody's wrists stiffen up. <laughs> Everybody walks a little bit taller, a little bit braver. It's amazing. And it's not just because Art's so good at guitar. <laughs> it's, a, it's the spirit at work. We've got a very special guest coming up next. This is a man who's uh, been fighting the good fight long before the cooties outbreak that we're living through right now. He's a man who stands for choice. He's a man who stands for bodily autonomy. It's this crazy notion <laughs> of my body, my choice. Something that we used to hear a lot of from uh, our opposition. Not so much these days. Not so much these days. But uh, the man I want to introduce coming up next, he's a man named Ted Kuntz. Where are you, Ted? Is he around? Ah, uh, there he is. <laughs> Everybody, let's hear it for Ted! Oh! Good morning. <laughs> Wow, what a beautiful sight to see all of your smiling faces and beautiful hearts. Thank you for being here. Thank you for responding to the call, because I know the government would rather you stayed home. But you know there's more important things in this world, and that's why you're here. I just want to honor Art and Heather, the Harvest team, and the Harvest community because you're fighting not just for your church, you're fighting for all Canadians. You know, I, uh, I, I actually think this is a religious war. And it's a war between those who believe in a God, believe in a creator, a, a loving creator. And the other religion is the religion of fear. And that's the religion that our government and our mainstream media want us to buy into. And those of us that want to challenge that religion of fear are censored heavily. You know, it used to be when I'm with Vaccine Choice Canada, we believe in choice, medical choice. When we would put information out there, it might last a couple of months before Facebook and Instagram and all of those took it down. And then it might be up for 24 hours before they took it down. And now when we're having a live interview, they take it down during the interview. That's how vicious is the censorship we're experiencing in Canada. That's how they control us. So we're here to stand up for our God-given rights and freedoms. You know, we've been misled and I will own it I somehow grew up with the notion that the Charter of Rights and Freedoms came from the government. It doesn't. It comes from God. And the Charter is actually a document to hold the government accountable. So we've been misled or misinformed or just misunderstood where that rights and freedoms comes from. It does not come from the government. And if anything, they're the enemy. Rocco Galati, who's the lawyer that we have retained in order to fight for our rights and freedoms here in Canada, he has advised us many times that he says the most dangerous organizations in the world are governments. And every genocide that has been created on this planet comes from government. So we need to recognize the danger. But you know, that's a hard, that's a red pill. That's a hard one to swallow. Because when you start to pull back the curtain, you start to realize that 
Our government can't be trusted to act in our best interest. Our mainstream media can't be trusted to speak truth. And our pharmaceutical medical industry, because they're the same, is not here for our health. And those are hard things to come to terms with. And so we don't want to see it, but we have to see it. I've been saying in my messages lately is that what's coming is not the great reset, but the great reveal. The corruption, the deception, the distortion, the greed, the evil is being revealed. And thank God. You know, I want to say one of the best things that Bonnie Henry did was force Harvest Church to come here. So thank you, Bonnie. That might be the only thing you've done right this year. Those of you that have been to some of our freedom rallies just over here, sometimes we have little Macy, who's six years old, speak. And Macy, you know, I, I, I've uh, nominated her to be our chief medical officer in British Columbia. She can say more in a three-minute speech about how to be healthy, you know, clean food, clean water, fresh air, sunlight, vitamin D, than Bonnie Henry has done in a year. She's six years old. But that's not by accident. This, these COVID measures isn't about our health. It's about our capture. It's about dehumanizing us. It's about breaking us down. It's about isolating us. It's about separating us. And so what Harvest Ministry is doing is bringing us back together. It's reclaiming what they're trying to take away from us. And so I honor Harvest for being the light that they are on this planet. But you know, I, I have compassion for those that are confused by all of this. It's, like I said, it's hard to see. I had a, a challenging conversation before the service started this morning with Bill, who is the morning voice apparently on Kelowna's radio station. I wouldn't know that because I stopped listening to mainstream media about 20 years ago. And Bill was you know, telling me about how his parents fought tyranny in World War II and I thought, well, we've got, we, we're, we're on the same page here. We understand that tyranny has to be fought. And then he saw my button on my sweater here, and he saw the word vaccine choice, and he said, what's that about? And I said, I'm with Vaccine Choice Canada. And he said, well, that's where we part ways. And I said, how is that? He said, I don't believe you should have choice. And I said, do you believe in bodily sovereignty, that I'm so a sovereign being and I have right over this body? And he said, no. And he said, you're actually dangerous, and if I had my way, all of you would be vaccinated. So that's what we're up against. I'm assuming Bill is a good guy. His parents understand tyranny. I think Bill misunderstands the tyranny here. He thinks it's a virus, it's not a virus. The tyranny is the measures that they're imposing with the excuse of a virus. You know, the slave owners understood the power of masking. That's how they broke the slaves, is they would put a mask on them. It dehumanized them. It took away their voice. It took away their personality. And that was intentional. They did that, or they do that, to the prisoners in Guantanamo Bay, and they've been doing that for 20 years. This is not a new technique. They understand it perfectly. So we are up against some hard things. And I know that Rocco is doing some fabulous work. You may not know that he filed two legal actions last week in the Superior Court of Ontario. One was against the abuse of our children in our schools with the forced masking, forced PCR testing, forced hand sanitization, forced distancing. Now, I'm assuming you didn't read that in the mainstream media. There'll be a press conference next Thursday, so you might want to be attentive to that for that legal filing. And in addition to the legal arguments, Rocco submitted over 3,000 pages of expert testimony arguing against those measures. The second filing that he filed last week was on behalf of police officers in Ontario 
who are challenging the government because they say the government of Ontario is forcing them to violate their oath to protect the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And that press conference was actually this past Thursday. And of course, all the mainstream media was invited to attend, and guess who, who attended? The only two news organizations that attended was Rebel News and Druthers. So our media is not telling us the truth. But there's some good news, and I want to share some good news with you. You may not know that, um, I'm sure you're aware of what's happened in Grace Church in Edmonton, what's been happening at the church in Calgary, what's been happening at the church in Elmer, Ontario. Well, the uh, Attorney General of Ontario on Friday applied for an emergency injunction to lock the church in Elmer. And he wanted the sheriff to be given the authority right after the court injunction to go to the church and put some padlocks on it. And the, the lawyers that were arguing for the church said that they wanted the right to be able to cross-examine the chief medical officer in a court of law. And the judge granted that request. So the case has been moved forward to May, May the 14th, I think it is. And the defense is being allowed to cross-examine the chief medical officer, which should be very interesting. Because we filed a statement of claim last July, July the 6th, against the government of Ontario and the government of Canada. And they've had, what's that, more than nine months to submit a statement of defense, and they still have not submitted a statement of defense. And, and there's a reason for that, because they don't have a defense. But the other thing is, once the judge ruled that the chief medical officer could be cross-examined, the Attorney General again said that I'd like you to order that the church be padlocked. They can't have service on Sunday. And the judge, who seems to be a thoughtful man and upholds the law, said to the Attorney General, what good do you think that will do? These people will still assemble. They'll just go someplace else. And the Attorney General had to admit that that was probably likely. And so the judge denied the request to padlock the church. God is the church. So the way through this is that it's up to us. You know, many of us think that the government will end these measures. They won't. It's up to us to end these measures. This is our battle. This is our responsibility. And I would suggest the resistance has just begun. Thank you. Oh, nice work. Oh, thank you, Ted. Let's hear it for Ted Coates. Oh, man. That man is essential. Holy. <laughs> He gets it. That guy really gets it. Absolutely, man. And that point he's making about the media is so relevant. It's so relevant. People, people assume that because they're on the television and they've got graphic depa graphics departments and they've got all these fancy people with fancy hats that they're this beacon of truth and it, they're not. It's, it's not how this works. It's not how this works. But uh, we got people on the ground. We got Druthers. We got Rebel News. We got all these, these people that are doing great work, man. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're correct about everything either, but it just means that they are a resistance to what we've got going on. But um, before we get into our next speaker, I wanted to tell you guys that there's some, some ladies going around with a petition right there, waving our hands in the air right there. We've got a petition going around. They're trying to get 7,000 signatures. Um, what this petition is, is it to stop all, and I quote, stop all lockdowns, restrictions, uh, restrictions on gatherings, mask orders, and they're trying to bring charges against Bonnie Henry, Mike Farnsworth, and Adrian Dix. You've got, you're getting my signature, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I hope we get every single person in here to sign that thing, because that is, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's, um, it's wrong. It's wrong. 
you guys know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. This is wrong. Even if this was the big spooky virus that they promised us, we wouldn't be made safer by putting pastors in jail and by putting padlocks on church doors and sending uh, Gestapo on horseback to break up a barbecue restaurant. I, it, w it wouldn't make us any safer. Art said something a few weeks ago that really stuck home with me, is that if there was a virus sweeping our nation, I think being together is, is a pretty good place to start. Coming together and uh, remaining human. I, and if, if you want to isolate at home, you don't need a mandate to make you do it. If you want to be a, a scared recluse and do that, you, you do that. It's okay, but not us, man. We're going to stick together. We're going to remain human because we're, we're radical hug enthusiasts, and we're not sorry. <laughs> we're not sorry. Um, but we've got another speaker coming up today. Um, this man, he's a heavy hitter. Um, as <laughs> in the, the words of Art Lucier, he spanked the crowd yesterday. <laughs> he's a heavy hitter. He's, uh, I believe he's a, he's a homeopath, right? Is, and uh, I'm not sure where he is. We're looking for Daryl Wolf. Has anybody seen Mr. Daryl, Dr. Daryl Wolf? <laughs> yeah, maybe he's not here. Maybe you guys are stuck with me, hey? <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Uh... All right, he's out there saving lives somewhere else. Okay. So what have we got? Uh... Next on the list. Sorry, guys. All that hype for nothing. Holy smokes! Um, so our next, the next person we have up stage, up, up on stage, is uh, somebody that you guys know and somebody that I know. Um, he's somebody that showed me that uh, who Jesus was. He kind of opened the door for me because uh, I grew up churchian and I, I really resented the church. Um, I was kind of raised on a lot of uh, shame tactics where you get shamed into submission. Um, and that's, that's not, that's not what Jesus is. He, um, he, he puts out a call to make you want to be more like him. And, um, who Jesus was, he was the type of guy to flip tables. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, um, he wasn't a, he wasn't a limp-wristed, uh, mealy-mouthed Christian. He, he meant business and he, uh, called a spade a spade. And I think, okay, sounds good. And, um. And yeah, I just I I I'm in debt to art with my gratitude for bringing me to the to the reality. And uh, many of us are. There's swaths of young people coming into this church that want to leave the world behind because what the world has to offer us is a vapid instant gratification that ends in a hollow void. And this void can be can be filled. And I uh, I can tell you guys that for sure. Um, what. Uh, the darkness that lives in many of us can be taken out and replaced with the light. And uh, we're going to hear a story from, uh, we've got a testimony from one of these young men that's in the church who I can attest to is, uh, is an incredible person. And uh, I've seen transformation in him and his family since I have been going to this church. And it's, I'm excited to hear the full, full testimony. So I'm going to pass it off to Art Lucier. Let's hear it for Art Lucier. Let's hear it for Mitch, actually. This, his voice. Awesome, Mitch. <clears throat> well, uh, you, you guys will hear from Daryl another day. You're spared from getting spanked here today. You're lucky. Um, but, uh, but I, I, and thank you, Mitch, for just, you know, there's Mitch and a bunch of young people have just been brought in. And just, uh, it's real, it's raw. God is drawing people back to himself, and it's amazing. And, um, and one of these young guys is, is Austin Ferguson. Austin, why don't you come up here right now? I want you to, I'm going to do a quick little uh, testimony on why church is essential and what this is all about. Come on over here, Austin. It was Austin's birthday a couple days ago. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Austin, let's hear a snapshot of just, you know, uh, first of all, when did you start coming to the church? Uh, I started coming back um, at the beginning of January. Uh, we were doing house churches and everything, but we just kept hearing about Harvest from lots of different people and decided that we needed to come to uh, just be all together um, and not separated. Wow. So a little snapshot. Who are you? And, like, give us a snapshot of, of just, 
you know, even four years ago, what you were talking to me about. Yeah, sure. So um, this was chatting with Art yesterday in his office and wanted to get to know him and told him my story. And I know I've talked to some of you already, but um, four years ago, I was addicted to crystal meth and was sleeping on the streets. I had lost my family. I had lost all my friends. I had just battled it, always trying to be good and just, um, I wanted I wanted to be good and have a good life. It was always kind of my dream growing up, but I got sucked into this people pleasing that led me to kind of have parties all the time. And as people grew up, when we came, when we were supposed to become adults, I kind of went on to just keep partying and partying until I got into harder drugs and harder drugs until I just discovered crystal meth one night. I told you about it. It was uh, I lost my license drinking and driving, and um, I was supposed to get my license back after waiting for a year. I had been saving, which was hard to do because I was spending all my money on alcohol. But I had gone back to get my license, and it turned out to be like double what I thought it was. I went. Uh, I picked up a Mickey. I went downtown, and I blacked out on my way. And when I came out of my blackout, I was in a tent with. Uh, some other meth heads and they one was holding a pipe in my mouth the other one was lighting it with a blowtorch and that was how my meth addiction started and from there it was just this crazy cycle of I was on it I was off it I would try switching back to drinking and then that had all its problems and I kept going back and forth and back and forth until I was telling you I was financing a car and because of my worldview where I thought being successful meant I buy a house I get a car and all this kind of this stuff. That's my how I used to think you would be happy and be successful. But I, I had this car and I was sleeping in it. And as long as I could make the payments, I could basically maintain the delusion that I was successful somehow in front of all my friends. Because at least I wasn't pushing a shopping cart or something because I was special and I had this car. And and uh, eventually I got, I we went, uh, I was driving some friends to trail and we went in, stole alcohol, and on the way out, we crashed into a fire hydrant. I got arrested, went to jail, lost the car, and from there on out, I just plummeted down because that was kind of my little thing where I could maintain the delusion that I was actually okay when I totally wasn't. And so from then on, I was sleeping in parks and, and just living this crazy couch hopping life. I was still working as an electrician and um, I would sleep in parks and use my, my tool bag as a pillow, and, and I would use my clothes as a blanket, and I would sleep in parks around downtown, and I would get picked up for work and go wire houses in Peachland. So, so you just turned 26, yeah. but 22, at 22 years old, you're a meth addict living in the park uh, with nothing, sleeping on a tool bag with clothes on you, 22 years old, meth addict, uh, Okay, you've smashed up your car, and things aren't good. So how is it that you're here today, <laughs> a meth addict four years ago, um, and, and with a wife? Like, what happened? Well, I'm here because of Jesus Christ, first and foremost, for sure. <laughs> wow. And I have a great woman, Lindsay Ferguson, over there. Hi, Lindsay. Yeah, um, but I, I did uh, hit a rock bottom. I got in a crazy fight with one of my friends who was basically the only person I had left in my life. And uh, I went back to a trailer I was sleeping in, a broken down trailer, and Lindsay had come with, um, with, my, with my mom and uh, she just showed up there one day. I was just sleeping because you don't eat and you don't sleep for days. And I got arrested, came out, and just slept. And they showed up, told me about this place called Freedom's Door that I went to and um, got in there. And uh, it was just like this crazy opportunity to have a second chance because basically when I was on drugs and I got arrested after me and my best friend got in a crazy fight, I just wept thinking there's no more second chances. But when I came to this place and they showed me my room and I just felt this weight lifted off of me like, oh my gosh, this could be a chance for me to get my life back together. They told me I'd be going to this thing called Prayer and Proverbs in the morning. And I went to it. And treatment wasn't what like I thought. And it was this group, it was like a long table in a group room. And just all these rough, rugged guys, sunken in cheeks, truckers and tradesmen and failed entrepreneurs and 
people going through divorce and all these crazy things. But they were praying like I never heard people pray before. There was, it was, it was good morning, God. I love you, Jesus. Like from these rough, rugged guys. Like good morning, God. Nice to talk to you again. Just praying in ways I never heard. Like they knew him. And I always believed God was real deep down because I just seen him, like it says in Romans, uh, like through his invisible qualities in nature, just how we're so different from animals and how beautiful the world is. I just always knew deep down that there's more to life than just nothing. And so when I seen these guys praying to God like a friend and just seeing how rough they were and they weren't these like clean cut guys and I just, I'm like, these people know God, like the God that is real. And so I want to know that God. So um, the, the pastor gave a sermon later about how, about how Jesus prayed Abba, and Abba meant Daddy. And when I heard that, it just broke everything about Jesus being religious in my heart. And I just knew that I just want to know God so bad. So that night I decided I'm going to pray like how Jesus prayed. And so I put on my pajamas in my bed, and I just... <laughs> I'm just, I just prayed, I'm like, Daddy, I want to get to know you. And when I prayed that, I just got the spirit filled the room, just flooded my heart, and I was totally delivered from drug addiction and alcoholism completely. Wow, wow. So four years ago, you broke, and just, and you cry out to Jesus, and he comes. What did you notice in the next days to come and since then? Yeah, um, well, I was, I, I was just so fired up. People would come and visit me because they're happy about me being in treatment, and I would just start praying with them. I'm like, you have no idea. This is the real deal. Jesus is the real deal. I'm telling you, like you got to know God. And and I didn't have anything, but I had crazy peace, and I knew everything was going to be okay. I knew I was going to be clean for the rest of my life. And um, Lindsay was 16, I was 21, or something like that. And so we had a messed up relationship. Um, but she showed up. I was there for a week. And she's like, I have something for you. And she drops a positive pregnancy test in my hand. So I had only a bag of clothes to my name and a guitar. And I had to figure out now I have this kid. And that's Jack, who's in the stroller over there. And so, but um, yeah, we just, I just, I'm like, I'm going to get clean. I'm going to get right with God. And um, Lindsay, and if you guys know that they have the little bottles over there for the pregnancy care center, that's what Lindsay was doing. Lindsay was getting ready for the kid while I was getting clean. And, um, and so the pregnancy care center, like, basically funded everything. So when we were ready, to, when the baby was born, everything was ready to go with the kid. So with Jack, yeah. So they're awesome people wow. at the pregnancy care center for sure. Um, yeah, but God just did so much stuff in our life from me getting my license back, getting a job, getting married, having a kid and a second kid, getting a place. And actually... Just t while we're talking about it, um, I, I did spring cleaning this past weekend, and I uh, just, like, put everything in its right, right place in my garage, and, and, I, uh, and I built a hoist for my canoe so I could make more room and everything, got everything right where it needs to go. And I was just kind of walking around proud of it that I, like, cleaned up, and it was all perfect. And I just was walking around, and then I seen my tool bag, and I was just thinking about how crazy everything God's given me and and really it's only been three years because the first year I was living in a treatment center he's given me a house and furniture and art <laughs> and uh and uh this church and and all these great relationships it's just such a Jesus just really or God almighty he's a he's a dad for a fatherless generation and he's a hope for the lost wow wow so you were in, you were doing house church before you came and met met us. You know that house church is illegal, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, so uh, what do you, what what message might you have for the government of Canada as far as church being essential? What 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 would you say? <laughs> well, I guess I would say. Well, first off, this is all about the fact that COVID isn't what they say it is. Like, it's not what they say it is. It's, it's nobody's dying. You know, it's not like the Black Plague where, I can't remember that old show, but they used to, there was this joke like, bring out your dead, bring out your dead. It's not like that, you know what I mean? So church is essential because you are all sons and daughters 
of God, which makes me my brothers and sisters, which makes me my family, and I believe family comes first. So that's why church is essential to me, guys. Awesome. Well, everyone, Austin Ferguson, thank you, Austin. Awesome. Any last words for, for anyone listening? Uh, I just want to say I just love you guys so much. Every time I come here, I just get so encouraged because I know we're all, well, at least I know I am, just going through stuff. You know, with there's the pressures. You watch the news. You feel like they're coming for you. But, you know, I just, you know, the Bible says don't be surprised when hardships come your way because when if you suffer for bad, don't get upset. But if you suffer for doing good, you're sharing the glory of God. So I just hope that you're all encouraged, and uh, I just love you guys so much. Fantastic. Thank you, Austin. Wow. Wow. God is delivering people, healing people, delivering meth addicts. Uh, Father, I just pray that you would break addiction off of our young people in the name of Jesus. You know, I've got one more here person that, um, that I, I want you to hear from. And, and uh, I've known this, this, this young guy for a number of years. I've just watched him. And I know that uh, he's got the most incredible story. He, uh, he died and went to hell. And, um, and he turned his life around. And he was into gangster stuff. And um, when, we, when church became illegal... Uh, that's when he showed up with a bunch of you guys. Like, what? It's, it's kind of weird. But um, uh, <clears throat> I want Jordan Samuel up here right now. I know I've seen him somewhere. Jor there he is. Jordan. All good, all good, yeah. What's going on, everybody? So good to see you guys here. Come on, it's like we get, I get to see the real body coming out, coming together, coming together in unity right now. You know, so you know, a little bit about me, guys. You know, I grew up here. Maybe some of you guys know me. Um, right now, I'm here telling you about Jesus when back in the day, I was selling drugs, stealing, partying, clubs, women, all those things. My, my uh, thing that I always want to share is this is that everybody tries everything else. Sex, drugs, they try everything. Sex, drugs, women, you know, partying, filler, filler, filler. Um, nothing that's actually tangible. What, I, what I'm telling you about is Jesus Christ the Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He saves and he's mighty. I say if you try something today, try Jesus. Drop the drugs, drop the liquor, drop those things. God is so personal. He's all about relationship. He's so loving, he's gentle, he's kind. You know, when I, when I was, uh, I worked up north. I worked on the drilling rig, sold a lot of drugs up there, did a lot of things. Um, I didn't know Jesus when I was up there. And I and, and hung out with the wrong people, was involved in the wrong things. And the Lord would always pursue me. God is relentless. He is relentless. He loves each and every one of us. He, see, when I was looking the other way, living a life of hell, God said, I want you. God says, I want you. Doesn't matter where you're at. He, he wants us. So what happened with me, guys, was I, um, <laughs> come on, guys. I, I uh, was, was on my trailer floor. I, you know, I, I overdosed on crack cocaine. I died. I never believed in hell or heaven. I didn't believe. I knew I believed in karma. I believed if you could do the best you could do, you're going to get to wherever you go. You know, agnostic-wise, that, that's what I believed in. Um, but let me tell you something. There's only one way. Only one way. God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through me. And that was something I refused to listen to. I said, Jesus is just a man there's no way that Jesus just came and died for me. No way that a man came in this world just to, to save me. But let me tell you something. He's not just a man. This is God in the flesh. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's coming back soon. So, guys, I, will, I, will, I passed out on my trailer floor of a heart attack. I was up at, way up in, uh, Kid, by the Kitimat area up there. And um, way up north, sorry. And... 
what happened was I did drugs, I overdosed, had a heart attack, died on my trailer floor. Let me tell you something. Nobody else showed up except Jesus. It wasn't Buddha, it wasn't Allah, it wasn't any of these things. It was Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, who came. He came when I was in the lowest part of my life. I was dying on the trailer floor and my spirit cried out to the Lord. I cried out to the Lord. I said, help me, Lord. Help me as my heart's beating radically, as I'm falling to the ground and I'm sweating profusely. And I'm saying, help me, Lord. My spirit cries out, boom. I'm out, guys. I'm gone. The spiritual realm is real. I'm here to tell you today that the Lord is coming back and he wants us right. Right now what you're seeing, I look out here and I look at the whole body and we're coming together in unity. God did a good job of sifting those who want to actually have church and those who aren't doing church. I'm here to tell you that heaven's real. Heaven is real. I overdose on the trailer floor. The Lord comes, I go to the gates of heaven. I see the gates of heaven, guys. They're very real. I didn't walk in the gates of heaven because I'd be living for eternity right now. I call it where I go to God's personal office room. Jesus goes to the right hand of the Father. I sit down. I began to get judged. I lived as an orphan my whole life. I never knew I was, didn't have a father, Did, didn't have those things. So I, you know, I was always having to prove something. You know, I got into gang violence because they showed me respect, they loved me. That's what I thought in those times. But it's just a cycle. They don't love you. It's just a bunch of hurt boys leading hurt boys. That's all it is. What I'm here to tell you right now is that the Lord showed me for the first time an identity. He says that you are an or orphan. It was the first time that I realized that I had a father in heaven. Just because I didn't have a worldly father doesn't mean that I didn't have a father in heaven who loved me, that protected me all the time. Amen? Shut that up. So the coolest part is, guys, is that when I was in heaven, the Lord showed me his love. He lavished his love on me. I never knew love like that ever in my life. You know, everything is always conditional. In this world, it's conditional. I love you, but God's love, let me tell you something. He's all about relationship. He's there to pursue us all the time. And he says to me, I always love you. Let me tell you something about religion. Religion says you need to do all these things, and then God will love you. I'm here to tell you right now, it doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus loves you right now in this moment. He'll never leave you or forsake you. So, check it out. So, the Lord talks with me. You know, I go, it's like pride rock I talk about. It's like a sea of glass, and I go out on this peak, okay? And I'm with the Lord. And in heaven, you don't talk in heaven. It's like, I'm in heaven. It's like, Shh, yes, you are. You're in heaven. You just know. I go to this peak. I look on the other side, and there's this beautiful river that goes through. And I could see, and I could hear laughing, and children, and people on the other side of the river. And it was real. I, I knew that I knew them, and they were just full of joy. I could see grass breathing. It was real. This isn't a joke. Why would I make this up? This is the real deal. So I said, God, I want to be here with you. I want to be where you are. He says, no, you're going to go back, and you're going to tell people what happened here. I said, God, I just want to be with you. He said, no, you're going back. You're going to tell people what happened here. I'm here to tell you right now what you're seeing in the world right now is actually God's grace. What God's done is removing all the idols that we've once served. What we once served was Egypt of all these things, your cars, your job, your money, all these things you all idolized. And now what you're seeing, they've been taken away, and it's like, but God. But God. Well, I'm telling you guys, you guys better get excited because what's coming this season, this time, I'm going to say time, What's coming in these times is so exciting. The power of the Lord's coming. He's chosen each and every one of you that are in this field, that are in these parks, those that are hearing that are driving on their bikes. He's chosen you. He wants you. You've been predestined and chosen for a time as this. God says, I knit you in a womb. I've knit you in the womb. I've called you. But what we've done is we've been passive as a church. So what you're seeing is, when I look around here right now, the true church rising up that wants to be here on a Sunday and worship outside, no matter what the law says, what they think the law is, because it isn't even a law. But they're still saying it's illegal. It's illegal to have church, and people are being quiet. Let me tell you something. There's a time for war. We're in the time where we're rising up to go full, full force ahead. This is a full contact sport that the Lord's called us to. We've played defense for too long as Christians, or people who say they love the Lord, and not going offense, and taking back ground, taking the promises that the Lord has promised us. Amen? Shut that, 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 that. So, the Lord, I, 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 God says you're going to tell people what happened here. 
I wake up on my trailer floor. I'm going, what's going on here? No, this isn't, wasn't just a trip. I've done drugs. I know the difference. This is real. There's a spiritual realm that a lot of people don't know about, and it's very real. I come back. I'm on my trailer floor. I'm back in the flesh. I'm no longer in the spirit. I say, Lord, like, did that just happen? No, that didn't just happen. I was just tripping. That was just, that was just, a, just a joke. That didn't just happen. And my wife, she packed me a Bible. She says, I felt like I needed you to do this. Before I wasn't a Christian, guys. My wife always prayed for me. You know, we had a baby out of wedlock, you know, all these things. But after we had a baby, my wife's like, I'm going to start living for Jesus. I said, Jesus, this guy? Yeah, right. My kids will never believe in just a man. Never. My kids will find their own way, find their own path, and be their own child. Yeah, well, God had plans, too, for my son at that time. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, Lord, for my beautiful boy. So God showed his grace for me. But I read the Bible for the first time. It was Psalms 34. And it, it, it talked about the happiness of those who trust in God. And uh, it talks about even when your heart fails you. You know, all these things I was just reading. You can go read it. That I'm like, wow, God, you're so good. I was so quick to judge the Bible when I never even picked up the Bible to read it. I was so quick to judge the Bible, but I was, never took the time to read it. When I actually picked up the Bible and read it, I could feel the presence of the Lord, and it was alive. And I said, how ignorant was I? Who I was the judges, Christians, and people who talked about this Jesus guy. Meanwhile, he's the real deal. He's so personal, guys, and he loves us. And what you're doing right now, being up here and taking a stand, is powerful. It is so powerful, guys. Seeing your faces, you know, on Zoom, we can only do so much. But coming together, when we're together, standing in unity, where I'm like, I'm so proud of you. We've had people come off the streets from drug addiction. We've had people who've come up from abusive situations. We've seen many things, guys. But what would have happened if the churches were, weren't open or this church didn't stay open? Okay, guys? Shut that down. You know, I'm telling you guys, you, you guys got to get ready because what's coming is your true destiny, what you've been called for, what God is wanting to release this season. I know that things have been hard. I know some of you have gone through hardships right now or financially certain things. Let me tell you something, guys. God has made a way. He has plans and purposes for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. Go read it. He says, I know all the things that I have for you. I've, you know, no eye, no ear has seen or heard the things that I have for each and every one of you. I've called you. You're my, you're my little ones, you know? He says, become like a child so we can enter in the kingdoms of heaven. What does being a child? Child means not worrying about things. We worry all the time. You know, we've got too much adult. We need to actually unlearn right now. We need to unlearn because that's what's going on. God is doing a sifting. I... <laughs> Guys, in these times, you need to really know what it means that the Lord will never leave you or forsake you. He'll never leave you because things are going to get hard. But I'm here to tell you something. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. So I'm just going to say, like, I read the Bible. I come back. I'm back in my flesh. I'm in my room. No, that didn't just happen. No, no. Literally right in my flesh, guys, in the spirit, like here. God grabs my heart like this and squeezes it because God gave me a new heart. Yeah, he gave me a new heart. It's true. It's true. I'd be dead right now. But before that even happened, guys, before God came and got me when I was in heaven, the devil came and he tempted me. He tempted me with so many things, all the things of this world, money, car, success, women, all these things. I was rolling in this drop-top convertible in a spiritual round place, and I'm rolling, right? And then all of a sudden, the, enemy, the enemy's coming, coming and he's, he's, he's pursuing me. All these women, beautiful supermodel-looking women, money, you know, all the things. Money, car, success, what the world tells you you are if you're blessed. Let me tell you something, you're already blessed. You don't need all those things. They're just things. And you're seeing them being removed in people's lives right now, and a lot of people don't like it. They're hanging on with everything they got, you know? And so instantly I hear in the distance my, my, my uh, wife's voice. And she says, come home to us, baby. Come home. It's beautiful here. Come home. And at that time, you need to understand, God says, I'm not willing that one shall perish. So God will use whatever he can to get you. It doesn't matter what seed's been planted. He's going to use it to get you because he loves you, okay? So what ends up happening, my wife is sitting there, not sitting there, I hear her, and she says, come home to us, it's beautiful here, come home. And I'm going, what? Come home. And then I'm realizing, I'm snapping out, I'm like, what? I just remembered I, I just did drugs. I just remember I had a heart attack, and I'm going, no, 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 no. And then I go, no, and this car breaks down, 
breaks down. All of a sudden, these women turn to huge demons that were all looking at me. And I'm hanging on to the steering wheel, and, and I see an earthquake, and I hear people from the bottom. I can smell burning. Egg smell, like, a, like nasty. It was gross. And, and they were like, turn around. Turn around. Get out of here. Turn around. And I was just hanging on. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I was like, no, please, no. And then that's when I went to my body. And then I told you the guys, the part after when the Lord came. Because I believe right now, if I would have said yes to all those things of the world, the cars, the success, the women, the money, all the things that the world promises you, just like Satan promised Jesus. He's like, hey, just bow down before me and I'll give you all this. And he's like, get behind me, Satan. You know what's up. Come on. So I said, no, I saw hell. And that was just a level of hell. I'm not going to say that, uh, you know, I went there, like, actually in it. But I got to hear it. I got to smell it. I got to see it. And it was real. And it was enough to shake me to my core. Because you don't even want your worst enemies going to somewhere like that. You do not. But God is gracious, guys. He is so loving. Ten mercies, full, full of kindness. He's unbelievable. And so... I just, I just want to thank Harvest Church for what they've done and staying open and all you guys being here right now and where we can protest to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that, <laughs> yeah, come on. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. It's time to wake up. We are waking up. You will not be muzzled. You will not be silenced. You will stand. And you will share and you will proclaim with boldness this season. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are a child of the king. What does that mean? What does that mean? You're a child of the king. You are a child of the king. A child of the king. So with that, I'm going to say right now, if you've never experienced Jesus, if you want to know what I'm talking about, if you, if you, if you just want to dedicate your life back to the Lord, I want you to come up here. What, even, even if you have some questions and you just want to find out what's going on and you may not know, I want you to come up here so I could talk with you. What I'm talking about, guys, is that Kelowna, we are literally the eagle's nest of Canada. This is a place where the glory is going to come down. This stage was made for the glory of the Lord to share the good times right now, guys. So just dig deep, guys. Dig, if, you're, if you're here today and you want to experience true love, true compassion, True forgiveness. You all know we've tried everything. We've tried everything. But that space can only be filled up with the Lord. It can only be filled up with the Lord. And I'm talking real. The fluff season is over. What is fluff, Jordan? What is, fluff is where you hear the scripture, but you don't live it out. Fluff is where you attend on a Sunday, and you play Sunday, but then on the weekend, weekend or weeks, you're back to the normal same grind, you know, smoking pot, doing, you know, whatever, with women, mystery, whatever it is. That's not what God wants anymore. He wants all of you. He wants you 24-7, 365, and has chosen you for a time as this. So, Lord, I just, I, I thank you right now for what you're doing, what you're storing up. I thank you for this house. I thank you for being outside and worshiping you, Lord, for such a time as this. I thank you that we can protest your name and I can say Jesus freely. Jesus is king. Amen? Come on. Come on, guys. Shut up. Come on up, guys. Come on. I know you're out there. The Lord's telling me. He's saying, yo, come up. Come up, guys. Rededicate your life this, this season. Come, come, come get on fire. Your businesses are low right now in finances. Come up and get some prayer. God does that too. God loves to bless people with, all the, with everything that we need, guys, and more. Come on. Come on, you need Jesus? Come on, sister. Okay. We all need Jesus. Come on. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Gus, or Augustina, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I just want to say something that I've been planning on doing, and it's buying a church in my hometown of West Bank. So it's $1.5 million, but we don't have enough money right now. Uh, it's going to be a shelter to help women wow. and men too with mental illness and addiction and all that jazz. Free breakfast, eggs, Benny, and free clothes too. There's gonna be a free thrift store there. I know the Lord so well, but I, I need him too every day. Um, so if anybody else, come up I don't know but please uh we're gonna get a petition to sign for 
a place to, for people to heal. So if you could sign it, that would be really, really, really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, guys. Anybody have anything to share? Anybody need to come up, experience some freedom? Want to rededicate your life back to the Lord? Maybe you're saying, you know, like, yeah, I'm done with the same old stuff. I need something to give. I need something to break. The Lord can do that today, right now. I love being outside here and even, you know, just people walking by. The freedom of the Lord is here. Yeah, just as we uh, continue on with a little bit of, of singing, if there's anyone, come to the front and Jordan and some others are going to pray with you. Listen, it's never too late until you breathe your last breath. Jesus died for something and it's to save you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right down there. Right on, right down, yeah. Just stand more in the middle away from the speaker. Yeah, take him to the middle here, Jordan, over here. Right, right, right here, right here. And then, then you won't be blasted by the speakers. Awesome. Is there anyone else? I met this young lady yesterday, actually. I met this young lady right here. Um, and she says, yeah, anyway, it's just so awesome. So awesome. Anyone else?
Christ is risen. Hey, Jordan, I just think there's other people here. So put the call out again. forgiveness of Christ you know that the world's empty you know that it's empty the world is empty need prayer today. Maybe you just need some darkness chased away from you. If you just want some prayer, just right up here, there's people who would be willing to pray for you. Come on up. some other guy that can come and stand with Jordan up here to pray for people? Where's our ministry team, guys? People?
today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Concentrate them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, no. oh come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness is brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ whoa, whoa. Congratulations to those who made Jesus their king today.
will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones, they will sing. your praise our hearts will cry these bones they will sing Yeah, good word, Jordan. God of revival. God of revival. It's... <laughs> Something's up, y'all. The church is waking up. A spirit of revival's in the air. God's coming down. And he's drawing people to himself. Wow, congratulations again to those you've done it. It's like there's something that happens according to the word of God. It's like if you would believe in your heart that God, that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Your spirit comes to life, your sins are forgiven, and there's a new journey that you're on. Welcome to the journey, y'all. We 
see what you can do, oh God of wonders, your power has no end. Things you've done before in greater measure you will do again cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible the darkest night you can light up stronghold will crumble yeah. I hear the chains to the ground oh God of revival pour it out pour it out come awaken your people come awaken the city
on the T voice. Oh, there it is. You're the God of revival. This is a prayer. hearing our prayer. We're not done yet. If you if if you, if you are, you can you know. We've got a couple things here. Just we want to just. It's a nice day, right? It's nice, like it's a nice day. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. This protest isn't over, y'all. We've got a couple things, a couple special things um, for you, and uh, just a couple announcements here as well. By the way, if you want to know just more about us, our cards here, just at, and you know, we got Battle for Canada t-shirts, 10 bucks donation, um, and uh, get our card, find out a little bit about us, and yeah. Can we, can we just do a fun song with you? Is that all right? I have this favorite band that I like, you know, that has been around for 40 years because I'm old. But, uh, and I like some of their music and I want to do a song here with them today.
Worship is essential. Where's Hannah? Is Hannah Mapson in the house still? Hannah. Hannah. We're going to do a, a song. I just really felt to, to sing this song um, today because, you know, with all the cursing and, and the crazy in our world, I just want to sing a blessing over you, and I want to sing a blessing over this community. Amen. I just think it's so important because our words have so much power. So we're just going to... We're going to do this song. Most of you will know it, um, and it's pretty simple Check. once you figure out the words. Hannah's going <laughs> to join me for this one.
Hannah Mapson, everyone. Hannah. You're going to hear more from Hannah next week. Just before we, uh, you know, wrap up here, you know, by the way, thank you for everyone who makes this happen, sets up the sound people at Tech, just our, you know, our staff who comes out on a Sunday and you guys set, set all this up and thank you for helping put it away when we do pack it up. Not yet, not yet. But Heather's got an announcement. Uh, by the way, this, this church is so generous. I just want to, for the pregnancy center, Heather, you had yeah. an announcement. So um, I had somebody commented, to la I think last time we were out here, you know, they were kind of snarky about it saying, yeah, well, great for the church, but what do they do for the community? So I thought I would just kind of let you know if you don't know. Um, one thing we do is we feed the hungry on a regular basis, and we want to do it more. We have a staffed a team of ladies that get together, they cook, they take meals out to bless people. But the other thing we do is we support the, the Pregnancy Care Center. And, you know, we believe in the, in the sanctity of life. Um, we've praying for, we are actually praying for the ending of ab abortion. But the thing is, a lot of these ladies who consider abortions, they have no means to support their children. And oftentimes that's their reasoning. So we as a church have committed to supporting the Pregnancy Care Center. We've probably given them 100 or more, may, probably close to 150 boxes of just diapers in the last few months. But this month, what they're doing is they're doing a baby bottle drive. So I've got a few left. We took 50 bottles. You take it home. You fill it with money. It's really simple. Take the bottle, fill it with money, bring it back to us. It's all you got to do. And if there's not enough bottles, there are envelopes where you can just make cash donations or anything you want to do. But let's support life. You know, God is God is a supporter of life, so we need to be too. So if you want a baby bottle, they're over there. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey guys, I don't know if you remember Bonnie here. She, um, she actually got baptized a couple of weeks ago, and uh, she has not By the way, um, May 23rd, uh, Pentecost Sunday, not only are we going to have a big day here, we're going to call it a mega worship rally. Um, people are going to come from all over and stand for the, for God and for the charter rights and, and, and to open up the church. But we're going to do baptisms back against the bridge. I know people are asking, I need to be baptized. I need to be baptized. Like, well, your day's coming. All right. So May 23rd, that's in, uh, what, three weeks. Bonnie, so what do we got going on? What do you, what do you, you got some stuff over there for sale? Why are you, why do you, are you selling some stuff? Well, you see, I've got. Yeah, test one. There it is. I got delivered from the Lord and my daughter gave her life to the Lord. And so we want to go and get her off the streets of Prince George and out of drug addiction. And she's willing to take the hand and come home. So anybody that's willing to help me out to get there, I've got two support workers in Kamloops willing to drive me there that don't even know my daughter, but they knew me from when I was in the wet, uh, dirty wet shelters and addicted to crack cocaine. Um, God delivered me from that from 24 years. Thank you. Amen. Wow. <laughs> and yes, um, anyone out there that's scared of being baptized in the cold lake, the Lord told me if I can ask people to walk across a bunch of coals to come to Jesus, you can go to that lake. I did three weeks ago, and I, I never looked back since. It's been a blessing. So if anybody can bless me to help me get my daughter and bring her home to all of you, amen. Thanks. Wow. Going to rescue her daughter off the streets of Prince George. Any of you need kids rescuing off the streets, I would suggest you sow into her towards rescuing your kids. That's the way it works. That's the way it works, people. It's awesome. Mitch, where's my son, Jesse? We got, uh, we're not done here yet. Here you go, Mitch. Anything else you want to share while he's coming up? I think that's about it. What a beautiful day, man. I'm seeing people coming off the sidewalk. I'm seeing people I've never seen before. It's amazing. Oh, oh, feels good. Oh, <laughs> the spirit is alive and well. 
Holy smokes. We got a few more songs though, don't we? Yeah, you can't, we're not gonna stop like that. Come on, the sun is shining, the spirit's moving. Oh, oh! <laughs> well, let's hear what, what song we got up next, Art. Oh, we like this one. We like it. Oh. Go get saved, you filthy animal. Go get saved. Oh. Oh, and I could sing a ending song of how you saved my soul. Well, I could dance a thousand miles of your great love. My heart is bursting, Lord. Tell of all you've done Of how you changed my life You walked away the path I want to shout it out From every rooftop sing For now I know that God is for me Not against me hey! Hey! Lord, to tell of all you've done. 